So let's understand how a page is rendered and how in general rendering in Neos works. Right now, what we've done in our last video is we have created the no time is YAML and we have created a fusion file and it somehow worked. But let's figure out how that actually is built and how it works. In this video, I want to talk specifically about how the Neoskeleton does rendering. You have way more options, which we'll explore later. So you'll see if we are on the website, in the top left, we have something called brand name. On the top right, we have created the menu, which, see, which is exactly the menu here. We'll explore how that is built up. And here at the bottom, we have some content. Right now it's a placeholder, but we could write something here. We can write something here. And on the right side, it shows a copyright. And in the middle, it renders content elements which you have created. And you'll already notice here, that's the tree of all the documents. And here, that's the tree of our current page. So right now we are on the home page, and this seems to have one content collection. So a content collection is something where we can put in additional content elements. And here we have a headline, text, the two buttons we have built, and another text. So let's go into the code and see where it all starts. So Neos by default automatically matches node type names and fusion names. You can change that behavior, but it's a really useful default behavior. So we have here in our Vienna.js site package a document.homepage. You'll notice here it inherits from abstract page and it has two properties for the footer, which we'll explore later. So let's see what the abstract page here actually does. The abstract page here inherits from Neos Neos document and it creates a child node. This child node is automatically created. It's called main and it's of type content collection. So every time I'm creating a page which inherits from abstract, a child node called main of type content collection is automatically created. This is the one which we have here. We would be able to create multiple different content collections and in each of those you can add further content and so for example, we could make another content collection which is called sidebar and there we can add some widgets. Ignore the constraints for now. We also get additional property called hide from main menu, which is a Boolean and which is configurable through the visibility editor. So if we are on a document and we go here in and look for the visibility group, we have here an option which is called hide from main menu, which would only hide it from a main menu. So we'll also figure out how this works. All right, so this is just defining the data structure right now. So how does the rendering work? The rendering starts by with the fusion object document.homepage. So let's go here in document homepage. And here we see that document homepage in the body defines a property called main, which is the content collection renderer for the node pass main. We will not need to use that too often, so for now it's just good to see that. And you see it uses again an AFX rendering where it creates a new tag called main, which gives it a class, and inside here we're rendering the main props, and the main is this content collection. So the content collection renders each child manually, again matching the, the prototype names and then puts it into here. And here we have our main, so body is rendered by writing a main object. And let's go here to the website and we'll see actually that. In the inspector, you see there's the, the HTML body element where we have a header, no idea where it comes from yet. Then here, this is the one the thing we have seen. It renders a main content with code Q site main. And in that it creates a diff. A content collection always creates a sep separate diff, which is important for being able to, to edit that in the backend. And then inside that diff, we have a headline, we have a text block, and you see it's the same structure. We have 
our button, we have a second button, uh, the text, and then below we have a footer. So let's go back into the code of the rendering. You'll see the home page here inherits from abstract page. So same structure, let's go in abstract page. And here you notice it has two things. So here we have a header and the header is not assigned, it's just extended. And it's, it's extended with a property called header tags which is a component and it just renders out to header tags. So the, the viewport configuration, which we'll find in the header somewhere, this one here and this one here, they are built with that tag. So we could extend that here. And in the body, we are creating a fusion component. So there's news fusion component this is just a, a component and then there's news.news content component which you have seen which adds all this inline editing and being able to select it in backend automatically and here we have uh, two extra processes so this is something which is really cool i can show you that before on the text element so let's understand what process does if we go here in text, we have the property text, which is this inline editable thing. And just to, to make it more simpler, let's change this to saying that text is just from the current node, the property text. So I'm removing all this inline editable stuff. That's not interesting for us right now. So this will still look in the front end exactly the same. Okay, and now there was something which was called process. So you maybe have noticed before we have used an if that works here as well. So we could say text.if and we give it a name again. So if, let's say never, and we just here define false. So the if will always be false. And so if you render the page, the text elements never render. That's a bit boring. So instead of the if, we could use process and then replace, let's see, meetup, okay? And let's just get rid of that before so we can see what it actually has right now. Okay, and you'll see here the word meetup here comes and maybe we don't wanna write it like that. So what we could do here is we have our process function and it always gets as an input the normal value. So if I process it by outputting the value, it is just exactly the same. But maybe we want to do something with that value. And you remember everything in that curly brackets here is eel. So under references, we have our eel helpers. And here, there's a string help function and what do we call it? find here we could for example always find uh, always crop it let's just make that that's a very simple use case so string dot crop and we want to crop that to 10 characters and now we only have very short text that works cool so cropping is not so useful let's look for a replace function and there's a replace function here which looks perfect. So you see it defines a text and it defines replace. So let's do that. Prac replace, we give it the value and then we look for meetup and we wanna replace it by uppercase meetup. And so if we reload the page, I made a mistake. So you see it tells me that this expression is wrong and I forgot the closing brackets. Let's do it again. And you see meetup here is written big and here and here. So it actually works. Cool, so this is the idea of a process function. You give it a value, which is a string, and then you can modify that value. So I don't wanna change anything in text, so I'm reverting that. And we were here. 
So we notice that the content which is put into the body is processed by two functions. It is processed by a layered function and it is processed by a normalizer function. So this normalizes some code which you don't have to care about right now. The interesting thing happens here. So you can see actually that body here, let's remove that process function, would normally just have this body here and inside that body is a main tag and that's it. There's just some scripts added. But the layout here seems to add a layout to our body. And so the easiest way, of course, there's this component.layout. So here in our structure, we have the content, we have document, and we have a folder called component. And here we find the default layout. So how does the default layout work? The default layout defines a props called content, and it just takes the value. So we already know that. The value is the thing we get in, and here we can process it. So as a rendering, we are creating first a header component, then we render the, the content, and then we do a footer component. And these are the two blue things we have here at the top, the header, and at the bottom, the footer. So let's go into the header. You see, it's again, same structure as always, just that this is not a node type, it's just a fusion object. So you can build arbitrary fusion objects and in, in our naming structure, we always call it a component. And you can re reuse those components wherever you want. So the component first gets a home link as props. And that is just the node URI from, from the site. So this refers to the, the home page. And then we're rendering a HTML header tag with some classes. We add a link where we have our brand name. So we could already change that here to Vienna.js. And then inside here, we are rendering the navigation. And the navigation is again, just a component which does some more rendering. And then we have the footer. And so this is the footer. We'll talk about that later. So we have a basic understanding of how the rendering works so far. First, it starts by rendering the, the home page where we render our content collection with all our content nodes and put those into a HTML tag called main. And this is inside body. And then we have the abstract page, which goes ahead, adds stuff to the header. And in the body, it applies a layout mechanism. And the default layout mechanism is this layout where it adds a header and a footer. And since the home page inherits from abstract page, we could change the layout here. So let's create a new layout. Header only layout. Okay, and this header only layout will have a header and no footer. And now you see in abstract page, the body process, and this is where the naming of this function is important. The body process layout is default layout. And so we would like to do this, but we don't want to do this for all pages. We just want to do this for the home page. So let's go into the home page here. And just add add process layout and use the header only layout. So what's going on here is that the home page overrides the process layout by using the header only layout instead of the default layout. So if I open this page, which is the home page, it does not have a footer. And if I'm going on a sub page, it has a footer. All right. So the name here is really important because if you would call that, for example, layout again, it would apply the normal layouting, which comes from abstract page, this one here, this process function, and it would then again apply layout again. So if you would do that, you will have two headers and one footer. You see? 
So that makes it super flexible. And this is why it's good for you to start with this basic structure because it just can be extended and redefined and adopted so much and it's way more than you'll need in, in any normal project.